Hello everyone, this is Virendra Singh from ToolsQA.com and I welcome you to our new tutorial called Locators. We will be talking about locators. The basic idea about locators is that how uh, is actually to identify, uniquely identify an element inside an HTML document. So today we would be using Java to uh, to go through this tutorial. Let me take you through the agenda of uh, this tutorial. What are we learning today? Today we are learning uh, about the basic HTML document, what an HTML document is and what a basic HTML document looks like. Then we will try to understand different uh, development tools that are available for different browsers that can help us uh, explore an HTML document in depth. Then we will talk about uh, how different elements are described in an HTML document. So once we know the dev tools and we know how to explore the elements inside, a, inside an HTML document, we would learn more about how elements are described in it. Then uh, we'll talk about locators, we will uh, define locators and then we'll talk about different types of locators. This section is divided into, uh, yeah, this tutorial is divided into three sections. The first one is HTML basics, uh, which will be the first three uh, sections of, uh, first three bullet points of our agenda today. Then it's attributes of elements, which is again uh, in the first three uh, points only. Then we will, we will talk about finding an element using different methods in Selenium. Uh, this would be covered as the bullet points four and five then we will talk about locator strategy locator strategy is is nothing but how to locate an element and what are the different ways that we can locate an element uh, don't go uh, too much uh, don't, don't think about this part right now because as we uh, go through the tutorial you will we will talk about it in much more details and then you will understand more about it so uh, there are some prerequisites to the tutorial the first one is you must have gone through our basic tutorials on selenium well this is uh, very important because uh, you should know how you can create a selenium project and how you can associate your libraries so that we can directly go straight into um, straight into uh, showing you how the program how we can program uh, the locator strategy the second prerequisite uh, is that you, you must have gone through our basic selenium tutorials where we have shown you how to create a test how to uh, how to write your very first selenium test okay so uh, let's go dive deep into what locators are before that uh, i would like to discuss more about an html document so what is an html document let me go to my drawing board let me tell you so html document is html document it's uh, the full form is hypertext markup language most of you must be aware of uh, what uh, what html stands for and most of you might be aware aware of uh, uh, what html is all about so HTML is a hypertext markup language. Uh, any document written in HTML uh, creates an HTML document. So yeah, it's quite simple. It's quite obvious that a document written in HTML will form the HTML document. But what do we mean by an HTML document? So an HTML document is a structured document where each structure is represented by a tag. For example, the HTML body is represented by a tag called body. Body. So whatever comes inside it is the body of an HTML. Body of an HTML. Now similarly, we have more tags. For example, an HTML document always starts with uh, with an HTML head, an HTML tag. So a tag is defined by these angular brackets so let's say you want to create a paragraph all you have to do is create 
So a paragraph is represented by uh, an HTML tag P. All you have to do is just create an angular bracket, put P inside it, and there you go. This is your paragraph tag. And whatever comes inside it, uh, for example, my name is my name so this will form a paragraph so when you will uh, open this HTML page this particular text will come up as a paragraph okay so um, let me show you a simple HTML document let me create one basic HTML document and you will get more details uh, you will get a hang of it how it works so to create an HTML document, all you have to do is just uh, open a open a notepad of your choice. In my case, it's a, it's Notepad plus uh, plus. Then, uh, in a blank document, start with an HTML tag. So this is the opening tag. HTML, Angular bracket. This is a, this is the opening tag. This is the closing tag. So whatever comes inside it will it will be interpreted as an HTML document. So for example, uh, let us create a body inside the HTML document. So this is how we can create a body and this is the body. Yeah, this is the body. Now inside the body as we discussed we can create a paragraph. This is this uh, is a simple paragraph. Similarly I will create another paragraph. Uh, this is paragraph two. And between the paragraphs, I want some space. So I, I want a new line. For new line, the HTML tag is break br. Now you can. So if you don't have anything inside. An HTML tag, then you can open and close a tag in a single unit. So this is this is the example. This is exactly same as writing it this way. So for short, uh, so uh, for a shorthand notation, this is the way you can do it. Now uh, BR stands for a line break. Let's see how this page will look like. This page is stored inside. Okay, it's on the desktop. And if I open this page, yep, there you go. This is the page. So you can see that the first paragraph is this is a simple paragraph, then there is this is paragraph two. So here here you can see that the two lines are present and there is a line break. If I remove the break you can see that yeah the, the distance uh, the, the unit of distance between them has decreased not the unit the amount of distance between them has decreased so this is your basic HTML now each tag represents an element for example let us create a button element a button element is described by the tag input with a class of submit and we have to close it so this is the input button if I refresh the page now I did something wrong this is a button oh what I did wrong is that I did not close it okay so now when I refresh it you would see that there is a text box that is created and we can write things inside it now all your applications all your web pages would have these these interactive elements in the form of buttons in the form of edit boxes radio buttons links and images now these uh, these elements they they give they, they provide user interaction and user interacts with your application using these elements. Now when you automate it, you would want to access these elements. 
you would want to access them and perform some actions on them. Now this is the whole concept of locating an element. In your complex HTML document you want to locate a particular element and you want to perform some action on it. Now this is this is a big task if the HTML page is not designed properly. It's a very easy task if the HTML document is designed properly and due consideration is given to the test team. I will explain to you how. So uh, I have created a sample a sample document earlier uh, just for this tutorial. This is the tags document. Now in this document, uh, HTML document, you can see that there is an image element which is represented by this lovely dog. Then there is a simple input tag. This input tag is behaving as a text input. Then we have a, another input tag which is behaving as a button. Then we have again just a, it's a duplicate. Then we have a checkbox. You can check and check it. Then there is a hidden input box. And then there is the, these radio buttons. So these are different elements inside an HTML document. Now we will try to access them. We will try to access these elements uh, using Selenium. But before before actually trying to access them using Selenium, we should know how we can individually identify these elements. Let me open the source code. Let me open these uh, open the, the the document. Okay. So if I just right click on it and if I click on in click on view source you will see that it will open up the source document for me so this is the HTML document here it starts within the HTML open and close brackets close tag signs then this is the body and inside it this is the body now the first element is image the source of image is this file this JPG and the height and width of this element is represented by 200 by 200 pixel. Now, this is the closing tag, this is the opening tag. Now, each element uh, can be can have attributes. Now, what are attributes? Attributes are these parts. These three elements that you can see, these three uh, additional piece of information that you have. So these are attributes. Now attributes give more information, more meaning to a tag. So we can create uh, this image tag uh, individually also without giving these, uh, without giving these uh, attributes, and it will just work fine. Where is it? Oh, it's not editable. So let me open it here. This is the the same document, and if I do this. I open it, I do this, and I put two breakpoints, and you will see that I can I can remove them. I can remove these attributes. Source is a mandatory attribute for image tag because source defines where this tag will take the image which it has to display. So if I go to yeah, if I go to and refresh this page, you can see that there is another image that has come up. Now see the difference. The first image is very small and the second image is very big. Now so these are the same HTML tags but they are behaving differently. One shows a small image, one, one shows a big image. Now this property, this behavior, the look and feel of the element can be controlled by attributes. And the attributes are height, width and source. So you can consider attributes as additional information about the tag. Now these attributes can have more information. For example, it can have a name attribute, and this name defines, for example, image element one. Image one. Now, now this name tag, it won't have a considerable. It won't have any impact on the way this. Uh, this element is displayed on the web page. Look, I refresh the page and it's looking exactly the same. But it has a profound impact on how people can use this image tag now. So uh, this image tag, as it has a name, which is uniquely identifying it across all the elements inside the document, 
this gives us an ability to reference this tag in our program we can we can tell uh, our program which could be a javascript program or which could be uh, asp.net program we can tell in the program that hey I want uh, I want this image tag which has a name image one to change the source image. So a simple uh, simple line of code would change the source image for this tag and the tag will start showing a different image. Or I can say that okay the tag name image one should now have a height of 200 by 200 and programmatically I will be able to change the height of the page uh, of the uh, image element so this is how we uniquely identify an element so there are many ways uh, the, there, there are a couple of uh, not many but couple of uh, attributes which which help us uniquely identify an element for example you can have an ID attribute for example 6876 this is the ID I say that I have an image tag which has an ID of 6876. So, in order to identify this uh, this element inside the document, all I have to do is say that I want an I want an element which has an ID of 6676. And the program, whether whether it be a JavaScript program or a ASP.NET program or your Selenium program, you will get that element out. But well, it, it's it's not that easy as it said uh, the problem comes when we don't have these name or these ID or these unique identifiers unique inside the document for example two elements will have the same name now that's a bad coding practice but we have to live with the truth uh, we have documents there are many documents which which have the same name or same ID or any other attribute which is unique to have the same name across elements so that causes more confusion and it makes it more hard for the test team that is you to identify the element well there are strategies around it we can we can narrow down onto an element uh, in a couple of different ways now let's talk about how we can do that